So this is a company called the Dynamics Lab and they just dropped this thing. It's called Mirage. It's the world's first AI native user generated content game engine. All the footage you see here, it's generated by neural nets. It's not code like regular video games. It's basically this neural network that's dreaming into life reality as you're playing it. Whether a GTA style urban chaos or Forza Horizon style coastal drifting game, as they say in the blog post, they believe that the future of gaming isn't crafted level by level by expert designers. It's imagined, generated, and played by anyone in real time. And we've seen more and more stuff like this coming out of Google DeepMind, for example. Microsoft has their own version. But Mirage was built by a lesser known team, but a world-class team. As they say in the blog post, Mirage was created by a deeply technical, creatively driven team of AI researchers, engineers, and designers. With experience from Google, Nvidia, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Carnegie Mellon University, and UC San Diego, they are focused on pushing the boundaries of generative world models. So Mirage is the world's first real-time generative engine enabling live UGC gameplay, user-generated content, through what they describe as state-of-the-art AI world models. It's built to support dynamic, interactive, and sustained gameplay, it enables entire worlds to be generated and modified live through natural language, keyboard, or controller input. And you'll see me actually interact with this thing in a second. At some point, I type into the prompt to make it rain, and it does. It starts raining in the game world. So you're basically able to type in whatever commands you can imagine, and this neural network will try to create that thing in real time in the game itself. Again, this isn't based on some uh, scripts or coding. It's not predefined, predetermined. It will try to create this thing to the best of its ability on the fly. If you wanna check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. Right now there are two playable demos. One is an urban chaos GTA style, and one is Coastal Drift, a Forza Horizon style game. Both of these are fully generated on the fly. They're not scripted experience. They're living playable simulations shaped in real time by each player playing it. Now they compare their work to some of the recent works from Google DeepMind and others. We've seen the AI Doom and Genie from Google. We've seen AI Minecraft from Descartes and AI Quake 2 from Microsoft, but Mirage offers several distinct advantages. Again, this is according to the information that they've put out. This is a research preview. But one, it enables user-generated content through text input at any moment during gameplay, marking a significant leap beyond previous world model-based games generation approaches. It produces more photorealistic visuals moving beyond the pixelated or blocky styles of earlier systems, and it supports much longer interactive experiences with playable sequences extending beyond 10 minutes. And as you'll see in a second, I can attest to all of this, they do seem to have moved this field forward. Now, keep in mind, this is a brand new technology. It's not gonna look perfect. It's not gonna be perfect. There's still a lot of limitations, but this is a start of a brand new way for us to generate these games in real time without coding and scripts and level designers, as they say. If you think about it in traditional games, everything is pre-authored. The city is laid out, missions are scripted. There's only a finite amount of experience to be had. Mirage kind of breaks this boundary by letting players create new experiences dynamically as they play the game. Using text prompts, keyboard inputs, players might be able to request an alley to escape through or spawn a vehicle or expand the city skyline on the fly. The game responds instantly, weaving in these user-generated elements seamlessly into the ongoing simulation. The world isn't just interactive, it's co-evolving with the player. They didn't use the words matrix-like in their description, but I, I'm sure they wanted to. Another interesting point is that this is trained on an internet-scale video dataset. 
So as you can probably imagine, there are tons of videos of people playing various video games online. All of those are being used for pre-training this model. Next, it's fine-tuned with some human data, for example, players recording their gameplay, syncing that to keyboard commands, etc. So it's fine-tuned to be more responsive to the inputs. And the final result is the Mirage model. One other thing that's important to understand is that this could be easily ran in the cloud. You can play fully 3D games on your computer without a graphic card because it will basically be streaming remotely. You can have instant play from anywhere, no download needed. So the technology here borrows both from large language models and diffusion models, the ones that are used to generate images and video. But let's dive in and take this thing for a spin. All right, so this is Mirage. We have the Urban Chaos and the Coastal Drift. Let's try the Urban Chaos. All right, so WASD, we can control the camera with the arrow keys, shift to run, space, attack, aim, and we can also type our text prompts in here. So let's check it out. All right, so I'm going to start walking forward and let's see if we can take a right. So the the it feels a little bit laggy, like it's it's lagging. But it's not too bad. It's almost like um, maybe the connections is a little bit slow. But I mean, it is responding to me in real time. I'm able to turn the character. I'm able to move the camera. Like, let's say I want to turn to the left and have the camera pan to the left as well. Like, I'm able to do it. Um, if I want to jump, I can jump. Well, let's see. Jump. Jump. There we go. Let's see if we can run. So that's running, and I believe we can also shoot. What kind of a GTA game would this be if you can't shoot? Let's uh, let's see if I can do that. Um, so it looks like it might be raining, right? Well, let me see if I can find anyone to attack. Uh, there's a person. I believe F was to fire. Or in this case, it's just uh, it's just punching. But, oh, there we go. Okay, so we're able to shoot. So, I mean, obviously, this is not perfect, right? This is still kind of, you know, it's a diffusion model running this. So, it's not going to be as great as a real game where everything is scripted. But it's it's impressive for what it is. It's, it's very interesting that we're, it's responding to me in near real time. I mean, it's it's looking like a video game. This this is a video game, so I'm able to churn and shoot, etc. Let's check out the text prompts to see how well those work. So let's say I wanted to they give you a few sample prompts. Let's start with the yellow cab appears, but we'll also try our own uh, custom prompt. So let's see. Let's look around and see if there's a oh, there's a yellow taxi cab. I'm not sure if I'm able to interact with these though. Yeah, I don't think it's able to drive around quite yet, but that's that's our yellow taxi cab. How about this? It's a snowing. Can we make it snow? Oh, they reset. Okay, let's try a different city. Let's try this city, for example. So I guess there's a limit to how much you can stay in one location. Let's see if we can make it snow. Okay, so we put that in. We're walking across the street, and let's see, snow. Usually it takes a few seconds for those things to start responding. Let's see here. It's a very strange looking person, but if you've never seen these uh, diffusion games before, this might look like complete nonsense. And yeah, I get that it is, but here's the thing. This is a lot better than the previous iterations of this that we've seen. So keep in mind, just like AI video and AI images and AI music, it sucks now. It might not suck a year from now. It might completely change. And you know what? I'm beginning to see what appears to be snow falling down, and there's looks like there's there's snow on the ground. So that prompt seems to be working. I mean, certainly it seems like it's it's now snowing. Again, I mean, this is not gaming material quite yet, but how quickly these things are progressing is kind of interesting. Anyways, let's try the racing game. This is it, Coastal Drift. And let's say we want to go near the ocean. Let's see. All right, let's go. It's looking pretty good. So it's it's responding 
pretty quickly. It's a little bit sluggish, but it's not too bad. There's like a split second delay between me pushing the button and it responding. Um, but it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's almost playable i would say it is not quite there yet but it's almost playable i mean it is responding to these button presses in real time and also it looks like i can upload images like my own images and maybe it will even create a game to play a a scenery to play in so let's let's try that out so i think it needs an actual car in the image so let's try this from the actual game and there it is so change the car into whatever car they had before. But I mean, it, that initial starting frame was kind of close to, you know, where we were starting. This kind of seems like it. So just for reference, this is, I mean, it's a little bit different, obviously. So we have the mountains and the greenery and the roads. And here's kind of what it's doing. You know, it's not terrible. And how about for the world prompt, we say driving through a dense city. So let's see if it's able to kind of change that environment into a dense city, whatever that means. Now let's see, let's give it a few seconds. So it's able to adjust. This is just what a, a corn field that we're driving through. I guess it's dense, but it's not a city. Is this a never ending corn field? Come on, or whatever that is. It looks like corn. Uh, okay, let's try it again. How about nighttime city? Let's try that. Can you get us into a nighttime city? Nope, it's just corn as far as I can see. Okay. Wait, is there a clearing up ahead? No, just more corn. Okay. How about this one? It looks like that's something city esque, city like. That's interesting. Okay. What's interesting is it turned me away from that building. Oh no, that's the building still there. That's interesting. There's another car. It's because of there's of, of a lag between when I push the button and when it turns, it's, it's definitely, it's a little bit difficult to control, obviously. So, uh, I'm not bad at this game. This, this game is bad. How about that? <laughs> but you know what? I, it, if you're able to deal with the one or two second delay, and the thing is when it's like in the middle of the country or whatever, it's a lot more responsive. But here, I think because of how complicated the scenery is, there's a lot more of a lag that's happening. What happens if I drive into the wall? It naturally gets me out of there. Anyways, this is getting closer and closer to being able to be playable games. Again, there's still tons of nonsense happening. It's still forgetting where it is. So they need to figure out how to do sort of like some spatial awareness of where you are. But again, I mean, if you think about where AI video was a few years back and where it is now, where images, where music were, I feel like they're going to figure this stuff out. It's still a little bit incoherent in terms of like where you, like you turn around and you're in a different place. But I feel like they'll, they'll figure this stuff out. Anyways, check it out. See for yourself. Tell me what you think. It looks like this is a preview, but soon we're going to have the full paper and maybe hopefully more details and more demos. Don't expect anything insane. Free your mind a little bit. This is very early stage technology. But with that said, just in the last six to eight months, we've seen quite a bit of progress in this direction. And keep in mind, Demis himself said that we might be seeing Google go in this direction. He hinted at it. So we'll see where this goes. Anyways, if you made this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you in the next one.